Hey there, SM. HTTP is rather slow, and in some real-time app, the delay in processing HTTP requests could be the bottleneck of the whole application. So, what's the alternative then? The answer is something called RPC. And just for a quick recap, RPC, or Remote Procedure Code, is a WebSocket pattern that is pretty similar to HTTP. So the WebSocket client will send a request to the server to execute a function in a server. And the server will send back a reply, which contains the result of the functions. Since we're executing a remote function in a server, and that's why it's called Remote Procedure Code. Unfortunately, Laravel does not support RPC by default. The WebSocket architecture that Laravel utilizes is the PubSub pattern, not the RPC. To implement the RPC pattern, one has to have the full control on the WebSocket server. And thankfully for us, since we're building the WebSocket server by using Laravel WebSocket, we have full control on the server, and therefore it's possible for us to implement the RPC pattern. And furthermore, Laravel WebSocket is written in PHP, therefore it means that we can access to all the Laravel components in the WebSocket server. If you're using a WebSocket server that's based on other languages, then you might need to build your own custom bridge to connect the WebSocket server to Laravel. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can implement the RPC pattern using Laravel WebSocket. If we go to its documentation, on the left-hand side, there's a section called Custom WebSocket Handlers, and that is exactly what we need to implement RPC. In short, we can define these WebSocket Handlers to directly accept WebSocket requests in Laravel. All we need to do is to create a handler class that implements the message component interface. The class contains a list of WebSocket lifecycle methods for us to customize the WebSocket logic on different stages of the WebSocket connection. Once we have defined a handler, we simply need to go to the WebPHP file and register the handler to a WebSocket route, which is very similar to how we define a HTTP request endpoint using a controller class. Let's create one of these handler files in our project. I'll create a new folder called WebSockets in the app folder and a subfolder called Socket Handler. And we'll create a new class here called Update Post Socket Handler, where the main purpose is to update a post. And just like what the documentation has said, the socket handler should implement the message component interface. Now the message component interface has four methods. The onOpen method will be called upon establishing the WebSocket connection. OnClose will be called when the WebSocket connection is ended, and onError is called when there's an error, and onMessage is called when the WebSocket server receives an incoming request. The first argument contains the details about a connection, and the second argument is an instance of a message interface, where it contains the message body of the incoming WebSocket request. Whoops, seems like I have implemented the wrong interface. It should be the message component interface under the wretched WebSocket namespace. Now every WebSocket handler will need to implement these four methods. While the onMessage method could be different from class to class, but the onOpen, onClose, and onError methods should have a very similar logic for all handler classes. And that means we can abstract these three methods to a base class. Let's create an abstract class for that. And just for demonstration, I'll just dump a few simple messages on each method. Now for the onMessage method, we will need to write a logic to update a particular post. Let's leave it for now. We will first need to register our handler in our web.php file. We can easily do that by calling the WebSocket function on the WebSocket's router facade. The first argument will be the route name and the second argument will be the handler class. We'll go to our front-end app.js and attempt to connect to our WebSocket server. I'll create a new function called updatePost, and now we're connecting to our WebSocket server directly, so we're not going to use Echo. Instead, we'll be working with the built-in browser WebSocket API. So we'll create a new socket instance and pass in the URL to our WebSocket updatePost endpoint. The socket object has a few properties for us to set a few lifecycle hooks on the WebSocket connection. We'll go ahead and set the onOpen function for now. And when the WebSocket is open, we'll simply console log out onOpen. And then we'll call this function after we have logged into our app. And I'll comment out everything about echo for now. 
OK, let's head to our browser and test our app. We will log in and we see on open in the console. We have successfully established a connection with the RPC WebSocket server. However, now there's a few concerns about the security of our WebSocket endpoint. Currently, our WebSocket route is defined as it is without any middleware applied on it. It has zero protection whatsoever. And that means everyone can connect to this WebSocket endpoint without logging in. I'll show you what I mean. We'll go back to app.js and we'll call our update post function outside the login callback function. And we'll go back to our browser and I'll open a new private window, visit our app, and we'll still see on open in the console without even logging in. That is a big no-no. We definitely don't want everyone in the world to be able to connect to our precious WebSocket endpoint. How do we fix this? Well, we are using the WebSocket protocol here, so we can't really use HTTP middleware. One of the possible options is for us to define our authentication logic in the onopen lifecycle hook. We could access the incoming HTTP metadata here by reading the HTTP request property on a connection instance. I'll die and dump it here just to look at what's inside this property and I'll restart our WebSocket server. And as you can see in the terminal, we can see all of the incoming details about the initial handshake. And we can go ahead and use all the data here to perform our authentication logic for the WebSocket connection. I won't be writing the authentication logic here, otherwise this video will be too long. For now, we'll look at how can we send data to our WebSocket server from our JavaScript client. But there's one thing that I'll do, which is to attempt to read the app key from the incoming connection. So if you look at the default WebSocket handler in the Laravel WebSocket package source code, we notice that in the onopen function is calling a function called verify app key. Now the verify app key will attempt to read the app key query parameter from the incoming HTTP request and check if it is a legitimate app key from the config file. If not, it will throw an error. Now in our own custom WebSocket handler, we should be consistent with this approach. So we'll copy and paste the verify app key function to our own base handler and code this function on the onopen lifecycle hook. And now since our WebSocket server is checking the app key query parameter in the HTTP request, so that means in our app.js, when we want to create a new WebSocket connection, we should also pass in this app key. Let's restart our WebSocket server and go back to our browser and it's all working. And now let's try to send some message to our server. So in app.js, upon connecting to the WebSocket server, we'll try to send a payload by calling the send function on a socket object. We can only transmit string data or array buffer, so we'll stringify our payload by calling the JSON stringify function. And I'll say the payload contains the ID of the post that we want to update, and also a payload property which contains the post attribute that we want to update. I'll hard code the value for now. And we'll go back to our update post socket handler and I'll dump the message in the on message lifecycle hook. The message object provided us a few helper functions and we can code the get payload helper method to grab the content of the message. All right, let's restart the server and we'll see an error. And it says undefined property socket ID. So it turns out that we need to define a socket ID for each of the incoming WebSocket connection. How do we do that? Let's take a look at the source code of Laravel WebSocket again. In the provided socket handler class, we can see that in the onopen lifecycle hook, it is calling another method called generateSocketID. In the function body, it is simply generating a random number and set to the connection object. Let's copy and paste this function to our base handler class. And I'll call this method in the on open hook. All right, let's restart our server again and refresh our browser. And now our server console is no longer printing out an error. Instead, we see our payload inside the console. But it is in the form of a string. To work with this JSON string, we need to convert it into an array in PHP. I'll call the collect and JSON decode function so I can work with the payload using the collection API provided by Laravel. And now we'll retrieve the payload and the ID from the message body. We'll dump the payload and ID variable to check if our code is working correctly. 
Let's restart our server, visit our browser again, and inside our terminal, and we can see that our payload and ID is dumb in a console exactly as what we have sent in a JavaScript client. Okay, now let's update our post using these two information. We will first find the existing post in our database, and then we'll call the update function on the repository to update our post based on the payload. Once the post is updated, we will create a response using the post resource class, and we'll send the response back to the client by calling the send function on the connection instance, which is represented by the from variable. And now we'll go back to app.js and add the on message hook on our socket to receive the reply coming back from the WebSocket server. Okay, let's restart the server and we'll go back to the browser and refresh the page. And nope, we're not receiving any message coming back from the server. And if we go to our terminal, we can see that our server did receive the request, but for some reason, our app is stuck in between the DOM and the send function. Why is this happening? So it turns out that in our post repository, we're sending out a post updated event upon updating our post. Now by firing this event, Laravel will attempt to broadcast it to all the WebSocket client. At the moment, we are using the sync broadcast driver. We are still in the middle of an RPC connection. We can't instruct the server to send out another broadcast. It's like someone who's buying a walking sleeping bag who wants to sleep and walk at the same time. So the code will start here forever. So to rescue this code, we have two options. One is to comment out the post updated event so our app will not attempt to broadcast another message while the RPC is still ongoing. The second way is to use an asynchronous queue driver like Redis for our post updated event. All right, let's restart our server and we'll go back to the browser. And now we see a message event popping up in the console. Great. However, the event data is a raw HTTP response, so it might be better if we call the toJSON function instead of the response method in our update post socket handler. All right, so that's an overview on how we can implement RPC using Laravel WebSocket. And now you might be asking, does that mean RPC can replace HTTP? And my short answer is yes but you'll need to make sure that the server has the capacity to handle all the incoming WebSocket connections. All right, key takeaways for this lesson. RPC or Remote Procedure Call is a WebSocket pattern that works very similarly to HTTP, following a request and reply pattern. HTTP is rather slow. RPC could be a faster alternative for real-time apps. Laravel WebSockets allow us to work with the low-level WebSocket API using WebSocket handlers. Although it is faster, we need to write a fair amount of code to handle security as it is not provided out of the box. That's it for now and I'll see you again in the next lesson. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.